Hello um, again, and uh, as we hear the passage today, um, just raise a hand if you think you've heard this before. I'm sure most of you have. Uh, it's John 6. It comes in the discourse of the bread of life, um, and it's, uh, it's the gospel. Um, I mean, it is the gospel in that it's from the gospel of John, uh, but also it's the essence of the gospel is in John 6 and verse 40. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Uh, so um, as we look at this passage, I'm going to backtrack a couple of verses to verse 35. Um, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He's fed the 5,000. That's the start of John chapter 6. Um, he's fed the 5,000. Then he's walked on the water. Uh, we know from the feeding of the 5,000 it was probably more than 5,000 because typically they wrote down uh, in, in round numbers of men. Um, so uh, that would have probably been 5,000 families. Um, so women and children wouldn't have been included in that 5,000 number. Um, and uh, as you know, um, people had lots of kids back then. Um, some people still do. Uh, so there were lots of people, not just 5,000. It was a huge, huge number of people. Uh, so that's happened. Jesus has then walked on the water um, uh, it was, uh, you know, some of the best jokes are the jokes that you get taught at seminary. Um, and uh, so you might need to just put your brains in gear for this one. Um, but uh, I was invited to go to Galilee. Um, and uh, we were invited to walk where Jesus walked and to swim where Jesus walked. Yeah. You'll need to just think about that a few more times, and then at some point in the sermon, you'll go, oh, I get it, yeah. So I've swum in the Sea of Galilee. I didn't walk on it. Um, but Jesus did. And then uh, Jesus, the bread of life, is the section we're in. And we have this very small passage today uh, that the lectionary writers decided was all we needed. It's like the nuts and bolts version of the gospel is in these verses. And it's John 6, verse 40. Everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. What do we need to do to have eternal life? Look at the Son and believe. And so in summary, you can see on the screen there, look and believe is the title. Because that is the essence of what we're asked to do, to look and believe. As some of you know, I quite like collecting loyalty points. Um, and uh, I've got my PC Optimum card, um, and I've got my Air Miles card and my Aeroplan card, and you know, if there's a card, I have it. I cannot bear to be in a shop and not to collect the points. And I know that they're harvesting my data and they're profiling me, but you know, um, the moment you buy a smartphone, people are tracking you all the time anyway. So, so I get that, but I just, I just make sure I get all the points. Uh, anyone else in here like to get all the points? A uh, few people, come on, I'm sure a lot, a lot of us do. Um, and uh, those of you watching online, you, you can feel free to comment along as you go. Uh, we, we often like collecting points, and, um, and there, there are reasons and concerns around privacy that you might not want to, and I appreciate that. But for a lot of people, um, when, when I was in, uh, in Shoppers Drug Mart the other day, and, I've, and I went in because they'd got a 30 times the points promotion, um, and so I've got my cart full of stuff that's on sale, and it's 30 times the points, and the person in front of me was asked, do you have a PC Optimum card? And, uh, and the man said, no, I can't be bothered with any of that stuff. And uh, I was just thinking, can I just scan mine? Um, because I knew I was going to get 30 times the points, which I can then redeem for such fun things as chocolate and ice cream and other things. Um, but, uh, but I had that sense as, as I thought about that situation that, that, that it was, it's actually quite simple. And for a lot of people, it's all they have to do is be given a card and then scan it each time. Um, and, and yet, uh, that feels like it's too much. So when we look at the gospel, and Jesus says we're to look and believe, my Father's will, verse 40, is that anyone who looks and 
to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. The essence of the gospel is that simple. And yet there are people who um, look at Jesus and choose not to believe, or just choose not to look. Uh, there's a saying, isn't there, in church life, um, I'm preaching to the choir. And today you're the choir and I'm preaching to you because you have heard the gospel before and that's why you're here. So if my job is to preach to the choir and you're the choir, your job is to go preach to the world because the world needs Jesus. A lot of people feel, and Christians can do this too, that it's about what we do. It's about the work we put into it. When we think of uh, of often of people, and we remember people, uh, we'll say, oh, they're a good person. They do lots of good things. And somehow in our humanity, we try and equate um, the work that we do with salvation, with eternal life with God. And actually, it's not that hard. It's incredibly simple. We're to look and believe. Bishop Stephen Cottrell, who's the Archbishop of York, which is the second most important uh, province in the Church of England, a uh, bit of, if you want some ecclesiastical geography, which you probably don't, but you're going to get some anyway, uh, the Church of England is divided into two provinces, um, which are called All England and York, um, which is geographically not kind of very accurate if you're a geographer. Um, it's, it really is not good descriptions. Um, but so all England is the south, and then York is everything uh, north. Um, and uh, anyway, Stephen Cottrell said um, at a conference I was at for clergy, he said, I came to the realization that I need to be re-evangelized about once every three months. I thought, wow. Here is a bishop, now an even more senior bishop than he was before, and he's saying that he needs to hear the gospel at least once every three months. And he kind of meant properly. Not just to, to hear the gospel said, because the gospel is proclaimed each week, and hopefully in every sermon you hear here, in most of the songs we sing, you will catch uh, the message of the gospel um, in the midst of it. But he said, I realize I need to hear it because it kind of it wears off. I need to be reminded of, of what my faith is about. And the essence of the Christian faith is that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. And the response that we're asked to that good news, the response is to look to Jesus and believe in him. We're not asked to do anything. Now, just before you think this is a get-out-of-jail-free card, that you never have to join a church committee, uh, that you never have to volunteer to serve, it is not. Um, but the difference is, you don't join a committee or, or, or become part of a ministry where you're serving in order that, if you do it really well, if you're really good at taking minutes, if you're really good at taking minutes, if your attendance at life group is really good, then maybe you will achieve eternal salvation. That's not how it works. Jesus says, look and believe. My Father's will is that everyone who looks at the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. So somehow we're, we're in this balance where we have to hold these two things together, that we're told of the simplicity of the Christian faith, that all we have to do is to believe and trust in Jesus, and then we're good. And then, in the knowledge of that, we find ways to live out that faith. So it, it's a bit like we can think of, you know, if when I say sorry, uh, then God will forgive me. We have a confession in our service each time, always in slightly different ways, um, but we'll have some kind of a confession. And humanly, because we all grew up, we all had parents who told us, you say sorry, and then they say, I forgive you. That's how we learned it, wasn't it? I did something wrong, I'm going to say sorry, and then they might say they forgive me. That's how our human, humanity works in our culture. But in the Bible, it's the other way around. God says, I forgive you 
if you're willing to accept that. And if you're willing to accept that forgiveness, then you say, I'm sorry. It's backwards. And no matter how many times I hear this and I preach on it, I still can't quite get my head around it because it is the exact opposite of everything I've ever been taught. The world tells us that when we say sorry, somebody might be kind and gracious and forgive us. The Bible tells us that God is kind and gracious and forgives us to the point that he sent Jesus Christ, his son, his only son, begotten son, meaning coming from the Father to earth, to live a human life with all its highs and its lows, to be tested and to be tempted, but to do it perfectly so that we can be forgiven. And not so that we can be forgiven when we ask for forgiveness, but so we can be forgiven before we even ask for forgiveness. And so the gospel, in essence, is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And so I told the story at the start of kind of being in the shop and, and somebody not wanting the points. And I think the reason that resonates with me partly is because I like free ice cream and free chocolate, uh, but also because it just reminds me of, um, of, of how um, so many people I have spoken to in my life I've, I've shared something of Jesus with them, and they've said exactly what the man said in the store. I'm not interested in that. I can't be bothered with that stuff. We live in a world that is hurting and that is broken. And I think, if we're honest, most of us know people who would love to experience the peace of Christ. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. We know people who say they're spiritual and probably haven't encountered what we would call the Holy Spirit. And so our hearts can be uh, heavy thinking of those people, thinking, I wish they could experience the peace that I know Jesus brings or that the Holy Spirit brings. How will they experience that peace? When they look and believe in Jesus. How will they hear about Jesus? Not me. Um, someone told me a great joke at the first service, and I've forgotten it now. Um, but I will, I will learn it again and tell it to you another time. Um, what was it now? No, it's gone. Completely gone. Um, but uh, they, won't, they won't become Christians because of me. They won't hear about Jesus because of me. I mean, maybe with the advent of technology they might. But even then, they won't hear about Jesus because of me. They'll hear about Jesus because you share the video on your social media feed. They'll hear about Jesus because of the way you go and on your way out of church, pick up a box of donuts and take it to a friend in need. They'll hear about Jesus because of the way you live your life. So when I said it's about my job is to preach to the choir, you're the choir. Uh, this is only going to go anywhere if you go out and show people and tell people. And it's both. You know, so often uh, we, we hear that quote from St. Francis that he didn't really say um, and that is wrong. Um, Preach the gospel and if you have to use words. He didn't say that. Um, we'd like to think he said that. But actually, we have to preach the gospel with our actions 100%. But people aren't going to put two and two together. I remember working in an office environment where people made tea for each other um, and coffee. And we had a list on the wall of what everyone had. And I'd, been, I'd read Thank God It's Monday by Mark Green, a, a book about um, taking your faith into the workplace. So I was all pumped and ready to go and, and told the way I'm going to show people that God loves them is by making them tea at work. And then I get into an office environment where they had a spreadsheet of exactly who was going to have what cup of tea, um, how many sugars they liked, um, whether they liked the milk in first or like it was really quite detailed. And, uh, and I realized that people who are not Christians do good and kind things too. And so if I want to uh, share the good news of Jesus, I can't just rely on 
well, I'll just, I'll just be the guy that makes tea for everyone. Because everyone made tea for everyone. That was the culture of the place. And so what it looks like where you are on your front lines, in your workplace, in your community, in your family, will be different. But we have opportunities to share the good news of Jesus. And to say to people at a very basic level, it really is quite simple. You don't have to sign up to be on a church committee. You don't have to volunteer to serve. You don't have to give any money. You don't have to attend worship. You just have to say, Jesus, I see you and I believe. Once you're in that place, then we know that if you want to live a fruitful Christian life, uh, we say you, you will want to worship, serve, be in a life group, give, and go live the gospel. But the initial, uh, the initial thing about the Christian faith really is quite simple. I found myself in the past in situations where someone asks me a question and I feel I have to explain the Trinity. Has anyone else been in that situation? I remember being about 19 years old and there was someone interested in, in faith and I, and I just found I started talking and I couldn't stop and I was going down uh, this runaway train of trying to explain the Trinity. And uh, now I've learned, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Unless you can understand the Trinity completely and feel like you can explain it. But it's not the place to start. The place to start is the simplicity of what Jesus says. I'm here so that whoever is hungry, I will give food to. Whoever is thirsty, I will refresh with life-giving water. Verse 35. 35. 36 says, as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. There are some people that even if I tell them that I use my points to get free double chocolate chip ice cream, will still not sign up for a points card for the grocery store. And that's okay. But there are people who were seeing Jesus in person and even though they saw him and they heard his words and they'd seen the miracles, they'd seen the bread, multi the, you know, Jesus feeding the 5,000, the multiplication there. They'd seen him walking on the water and they still didn't get it. So he said, you have seen me and still you do not believe. God's will is that Jesus will take us uh, to the Father for eternal life, and he'll do that based on us looking to the Son, believing in him, and then experiencing one day the offer of eternal life. As we take that good news out, it is incredibly simple. Jesus came to give life, and life in all its fullness. Let's pray. Father, would you help us as we are on our front lines, as we encounter uh, different people this week, as we're in our workplace, our school, our community, our family, the stores we go to, our neighborhoods. Would you help us to be people who can share the good news? The good news that it's not about how much work we do. It's about looking and believing in Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen.